Okay, everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is Mr. Adolf, and we are going to continue on with our cell division section here. So in the last video clip, I talked a little bit about um, the difference between somatic cell and a gamete in terms of the number of chromosomes they have. Somatic cells go through a process called mitosis, and we're going to talk about that in detail today. Gametes go through a secondary process called meiosis, which we're going to talk about in another video. In the last video, I also talked about the cell cycle. And the cell cycle is an ongoing process in every one of your cells in which it's doing one of two things. It's either dividing, which is what we're going to talk about today, or it's in a phase which we call interphase. And interphase is what we call a cell when it's not dividing. And in that state, the DNA is going to be in a form called chromatin, T-I-N. And before it divides, it's going to then change. And we're going to talk more about that today a little bit. And it has three distinct phases within interphase called subphases, which are G1, S, and G2. So if you need a refresher on that, go back and rewatch that video. But today we're going to move on to what happens when a cell is actually ready to divide. So let's say we have our cell here and it's gone through interphase. It's gone through G1, it's gone through S, and G2 has just occurred, and now it's ready to divide. And when this occurs, we have this process called mitosis. So let's get rolling here. Let's expand this a little bit. Sorry. There we go. Okay, so when, a, when mitosis is occurring, that is what happens when a somatic cell is ready to divide. And there are four phases of mitosis, and in this time frame, the nucleus is dividing. And that's important. I'm going to talk about that a couple times in this video clip today because it's a big distinction. Mitosis often is misconstrued as when a cell divides, and it is when a cell divides, but specifically, it's when the nucleus of a cell divides. At the end of mitosis, the cell has not divided. The nucleus has divided. And then there's a secondary process called cytokinesis I'm going to talk about. That is when the actual cell divides. So what we're going to talk about first are the four phases of mitosis, and that is when the nucleus is dividing, not the entire cell. So there are four phases to mitosis called prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Now, depending where you look and depending at what textbook you look at, sometimes these get divided into, um, you know, prometaphase. And there's a couple different, you know, extra phases in there. We're going to keep it real simple. We're going to go with four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And the order of those is important in knowing how they go. And the way I remember that is with a little saying, I, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I love food. You know, I talk about it a lot. And one of the things I love is tacos. So if you're making me tacos, I'm often going to follow up with the statement, please make another taco because I can't get enough of these tacos, right? So P-M-A-T, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, please make another taco. So that might help you remember it and the order of those phases. So we're going to start off with prophase. And prophase, pro, you know, means beginning, right? The prologue of a story is the beginning. And prophase is the beginning of this process. So during prophase, what's going on here? Well, there's a handful of things that happen. First of all, we got to get to that DNA, right? And where's the DNA? It's in the nucleus. So the first thing that we have to have happen if we want to get to that DNA and we want to split it into two new cells is we got to get rid of that nucleus. So the first thing that happens is the DNA begins to consolidate into these things called chromosomes, which we talked about, right? So when it's not dividing, it's chromatin. And when it is dividing, it's called a chromosome. And that is what's happening here. So we'll start to see these little chromosomes forming. And also that nuclear membrane, which is keeping that DNA in the nucleus, starts to break down. So it starts to dissolve. So if you take a look at this diagram here, you can see um, the nuclear membrane is starting to become, you know, dotted here. That's just showing that it's breaking down. And you can see these little X's are starting to form. Those are those sister chromatids, those two individual chromatids together. Um, and this is an actual cell dividing. Now, this is done through fluorescent microscopy. Um, and this is an actual cell that's going through division, and this is that cell when it is what we call in prophase. And the way I can tell it's in prophase at this point is you can see these little purple things. Those are those chromatids, and they're starting to condense. You're starting to see that they're there. So during prophase, the DNA coils up into chromosomes. At this point, they've already doubled, right? So we've gone through the S phase of interphase. So those individual chromatids have doubled into what we call sister chromatids. So instead of being a single chromatid, 
it's going to have that sister chromatid is going to be double of that. And as we talked about, that nuclear envelope is going to start to disappear, and that nucleus is going to go away, so that way those chromosomes are able to actually split apart. The second phase is called metaphase, and the way I remember this one is meta starts with an M, and middle starts with an M. This is so amazing to me. Every time I, you know, I talk about it and I think about it, when I think about just the mechanism of all this going on. Because remember, this is actually happening in your cells. And these little tiny molecules that, you know, they somehow know what to do. And it's all done through proteins. But what ends up happening here is these chromosomes start to migrate towards the center of the cell. So they all move towards the middle of the cell. And the analogy I have for this, if I think, you know, think back to Halloween, right? Let's say you went, you know, trick-or-treating with your best friend and you both you know and maybe you don't trick or treat anymore let's think back a couple of years if, if you don't do it anymore and you, you went out all night and you got these big bags of candy and you get back to your house and you're both sitting there on opposite sides of a table and you got your bag of candy and, and your friends got their bag of candy and you want to split it up evenly you guys made a deal going in here we're going to break this up right down the middle what's the easiest way to split your candy up is to dump it all in the middle of the table right that way you can see what you got and you can have a nice even trade here. So that's essentially what happens here. These chromosomes have to get split, and you have to have the exact right amount. You have to have 46 go to one side and 46 go to the other side. And the way the cell accomplishes this is all these chromosomes line up right down the center of the cell. So if you take a look here, you can see this would be the center of the cell, and all these chromosomes line up, these sister chromatids line up, and what ends up happening is these little spindle fibers. So these are organelles, which are very important for this process. These little guys here are called centrioles. And then off of those centrioles, we have these long, thin protein fibers called spindle fibers. And they act a lot like a fishing pole, right? With a fishing pole, you have your line, and then you have your spindle to pull the line back in. That's essentially what's going on here. So think of these little centrioles as the spindles. And then the spindle fibers come off, and they attach to what is called the um, the centromere of these sister chromatids. And you can see this is that image of an actual cell again. And it's not the easiest thing to see, but hopefully you can pick up on the idea that these little purple dots there, those are the chromosomes. They're lined up right along the middle. So metaphase, think middle. The third phase is called anaphase. And anaphase, we're starting to see some movement here. This is when those chromatids are starting to get pulled apart from each other. So if you take a look at this diagram here, you can see this would be one half of the DNA getting pulled to one side of the cell. This would be one half of the DNA getting pulled to the other side of the cell. And remember, each one of those cells is only getting 46. So if there was 92 down the middle, the 46 are going to go to one side and 46 are going to go to the other. And again, it's important that that happens correctly. Let's say one gets an extra chromosome when it's not supposed to. That's how you end up with something like trisomy 21 or Down syndrome, right? That not, It's called non-disjunction, and we're going to talk more about that at some point. But um, in this image here, you can see this is an actual cell, so you can see those chromosomes starting to split. How do I remember this one? Well, you know, I used to work at an ice cream shop, and we made a lot of sundaes, and, you know, one of our specialties was the banana split, right? So, anna split, banana split, anna split, the chromosomes start to split. So, think of a banana split sundae, anna split, chromosomes split. So, again, goofy, but it might help you remember that anaphase is when those chromosomes actually split and separate from each other. And then the final phase, which is called telophase. Now, this at this point, uh, we're at the last part of mitosis. And at this point, the chromosomes have completely split from each other. They are at opposite sides of the cell now. They are no longer near each other. The middle has been now no longer in the middle. And the chromosomes start to go back into chromatin. They uncoil themselves. And the chromosomes start to coil back up into these little clumps called chromatin. And that is so that they can be put back into the nucleus. So the final stages here, that nuclear membrane, that nucleus starts to reform around the chromosomes that have, or sorry, chromatin that is separated. And the cell has stretched out and essentially split into two new cells. So it's not two new cells yet, it's getting there. So you can see in this image here, this is a cell in telophase. So you can see the chromosomes are split up. The spindle fibers start to break down. The um, Centrioles start to break down. We don't need those anymore. And we start to get our two new cells here. And then finally, the final step that happens here is this thing called cytokinesis. And in actuality, cytokinesis and telophase happen pretty much simultaneously. They're happening at the same time. The um, telophase is going to be 
the nuclear membrane starting to reform and our chromosomes have completely split. But at the same time, our cell starts to pinch off and it stretches out and it actually, you know, it looks kind of like a dumbbell at a certain point. And they pinch off into these little things called cleavage furrows. And a cleavage furrow is just a fancy way of saying the cell pinches off and it breaks into two new cells. And that's it. That's cytokinesis. It goes now. It's gonna, Now these two new cells here are called daughter cells. And they are going to be in what is called G1 at this point. They're going to be in the first phase of interphase. Down here, though, a little something different happens. Plant cells have something called the cell wall. We don't have a cell wall. Plant cells do have a cell wall. And their cell wall starts to form right here, right at this stage. So when plant cells go through cytokinesis, they have an extra step here where they have something called a cell plate form. And that is going to be this thin layer. It's made of cellulose, right? We talked about that. It's protein. I'm sorry, it's a carbohydrate, it's a sugar, cellulose, and that is going to form that cell plate, and that eventually is going to be what becomes the cell wall. So animal cells don't have that. Pull that over a little bit so you can see it. Animal cells don't have that. They have just the cleavage furrow. Plant cells have this extra step here called the cell plate, which eventually will become the cell wall. So quick review. Uh, I'll bring this guy up here. Here we go. So we have, basically, we have four stages here that we talked about. The first stage is going to be um, prophase. In that stage, we have our nuclear membrane starts to break down. And we have our chromosomes start to form. We start to see some chromatin forming in there. You no longer see those individual chromosomes. So you're going to start to see these X's forming. And then our spindle fibers and our centrioles are going to start to separate to opposite sides of the cell. So we have our centrioles here, and then we'll put in our spindle fibers. We'll just you know, kind of draw a couple spindle fibers here. Those little proteins are coming off, and they're getting ready to divide. That's going to be our prophase. Okay, metaphase. Now we've gotten to a point where the cells are getting ready to divide further. You know, they're, we're in the next stage here, and we're going to have metaphase. And in metaphase, the way I remember that is middle. So our sister chromatids are going to line up across the middle of the cell because that's the easiest way to make sure that they divide and go where they're supposed to go. And our little centrioles now and spindle fibers have attached to the centromeres of these chromatids. So that is what's going to actually separate them. So think of it kind of like a fishing wire. You know, if you've ever seen a fishing wire before, which I'm sure you have, fishing line. Um, the centrioles, I know this artwork is not great, but it is what it is. Um, that's getting ready to pull those apart. The next phase is going to be called anaphase. And in anaphase, now we have our split, right? Ana split, banana split. Our sister chromatids are getting pulled away from each other. They're getting separated. Those spindle fibers have separated them to opposite sides like so. That's going to be your anaphase. And then finally, telophase. We're going to go, we're going to have our nuclear membranes are starting to reform. And our chromatid is going to go back to being chromatin, right? Because it's got to fit into the cell. And then our final stage here we have is cytokinesis where we have our cell splits off we have our two new cells here each with their own nuclei each with their own 46 chromosomes it's the magic number and that cell is going to split in two and eventually it's going to become two new cells one here one here each with an identical 46 chromosomes and if this was a plant cell we would have that extra step of the cell plate, so this would be that cell plate forming our cell wall around the cells. Okay, thank you very much, guys, and uh, hopefully everyone's doing okay.